This is Julia Levitina's first solo exhibition at Stana Gallery and has been very well received. I would argue that it is because she has captured exactly what we are feeling right now and expresses it in a way that uplifts your spirits and leaves you with a sense of hope. My name is Julia Levitina. I'm a sculptor born and raised in Odessa, Ukraine. Currently living and working in Philadelphia and splitting my time between the United States and France. I always knew I would be an artist and I've always felt that I was an artist before I was born. I'm a contemporary sculptor reflecting on contemporary themes. I sculpt figures and animals in terracotta and bronze. This particular body of work is influenced by the wonder of flight and the unique and unifying perspective it offers. From up high, artificial divides and petty concerns disappear, leaving only Earth's horizons that are beautiful and vast, no matter which way you look. Recurrent themes in my work are kind of a quest for wisdom, a nod to the disappearing old world, an attempt to resuscitate beauty. Simply put, my art is about exploring the extraordinary in the ordinary. I think of myself as a craftsman as much as I am a fine artist, and I do everything myself from beginning to end. The bronze casting method that I use is called in French, cire perdu, a lost wax. Centuries old, but it is still used today. It is a lengthy, physical, and sweaty process that is also extraordinarily satisfying because the result it yields is so personal. I mix my own clay in large turkey roasters and let it cook for three days. I make metal armatures that support my clay sculptures. I mold my finished pieces in flexible rubber with rigid plaster backing and cast hollow waxes into the molds I produce. The waxes are then coated in heat-resistant ceramic and will be evacuated in a special kiln at 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 982 degrees Celsius. I then pour bronze at about 2,150 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1,200 degrees Celsius, into newly emptied ceramic shells. I break ceramic off using air hammer and chisels. I then cut, grind, refine, weld, and finish the raw metal. I then use chemicals and heat to change the color of raw bronze to one that suits a particular piece in the process called chemical patina. I fashion wood or marble bases for my finished sculptures. My studio reflects the industrial element of my craft and is a concrete floored high ceiling unit in an industrial park. It has no heating or air conditioning except in small office space intended for working with live models. I always work from life. It is exciting and rewarding to be engaged with a live model in a very dynamic dialogue that I hope to then convey through my sculpture. In the case of live models, they either come to me when I'm working with the figure, or I go to them when I'm working with animals. I often find myself sketching with clay, or creating graphite drawings, whether in my studio or at a zoo or an animal sanctuary of some kind. I then bring these studies to my studio and begin the process of creating the sculpture. Now after a demanding installation like this one, Fundamentals in Flight, or a large commission like St. Joseph's in Georgetown, Julia normally finds herself immediately hopping on a plane and heading to Europe for several months. While she's there, she often exhibits and teaches in Paris. 
These traveled experiences contribute to many of the themes in her work, as is the case with Invisible Birds Sing. She started the portrait in Italy and composed the final piece here in bronze. There's a certain kind of magic in watching something that was not there before slowly come to life and become a story that tells itself in the form of a bronze sculpture in someone's living room or in someone's garden or in someone's kitchen table and it's completely independent from me its creator in my mind the purpose of art is to allow us to return to a richer and deeper human experience. I believe it brings us nearer because it offers a single most direct form of communication there is, and that's from one human being to another. When I was 14 years old, shortly after arriving to the United States from Odessa, I went to the Rodin Museum. I remember looking at one of Rodin's bronzes and saw a fingerprint in the bronze which to me was very moving uh, because I realized that something as ephemeral as a fingerprint of a man who died over a hundred years ago was preserved in this metal. And it was a movement where he just moved his finger to move the clay around. I love that juxtaposition of something so impermanent and at the same time something that endures. I think art is the highest form of hope. <laughs>